What's up, mighty boys and girls? It's your Ranger here, and welcome to a quick discussion video in regards of the new opening of Pokemon Journeys. And a lot of interesting, and in my opinion, also mind blowing things have been revealed in this new opening. So, if you want to know more, if you want to know my opinion, then grab some popcorn, grab some cookies, and let's do this! Analysis. Before we dive right into the play-by-play -play analysis, I wanted to point out that the song they are using in this opening basically is, is just a remix of the current opening, which is of course 1 to 3 by After Rain. But what I really like about this version is that thanks to the different style of performance from the new artist and the newly added instrumentals, it sounds really different, which in my opinion is really refreshing, even though it is technically still the same song. But putting that aside, let's go to the analysis. We start off with a typical character introduction of Ash and Go, but what I already find really interesting, and to be honest also really relieving, is not only the fact that Koharu thankfully is still part of the opening, but also I like how they told a little story within those few seconds. In the first frame, our boys try to convince Koharu to travel along with them. In the second scene, you see Ash and Go preparing for their next adventure, while Koharu watches them in a more indecisive kind of way. And in the last scene, you see them about to enter the next journey while Koharu turns around and seems to be very interested. Maybe I'm overanalyzing this a little bit too much, but I honestly just love the little hinting and little storytelling they are expressing in just this one scene. After some montages of Ash and Go looking forward to their next regional trip while also once again visually expressing Go's goal in the series, we arrive to the first very intriguing part of the opening. And no, it's not that Go catches an Aerodactyl, even though that's also really cool, but the whole next scene is a battling scene between Ash and Go, and I can only say one thing about that. Thank you. Because in my opinion, throughout the series, the anime has shown on numerous occasions that even though Ash and Go are very similar to each other when it comes to their overall love for Pokemon, they also are somewhat of a clashing opposite, with Go being the more analytical one while Ash is the more impulsive one. And since day one of the anime, I said that that dynamic would make for a great rivalry. And now, I guess, the anime has decided to use that interesting concept by potentially and finally making Ash and Go not only friends, but also potential future rivals. Next scenes are about Team Rocket, Dynamaxing, an interesting scene of Ash's Riolu and Surfetched having an intense training session, which hopefully leads to a great relationship between the two. And then, we have numerous new events being revealed. First, Go not only catches a badass Flygon, but also the opening shows Flygon not only in that scene, but also in the end credit scene, with Go seemingly forming a real Pokemon team. And if we put together the scene before with Ash vs Go and this scene right here, we can easily come to one conclusion. Go seems to start being a competitive battler. And I for once find this really amusing, because in one of my past discussion videos about my main issue with Go, I said it this, because if done right, Go on the one hand can be everything he wants to be, a battler, a gym leader, a doctor, a researcher, or maybe he will even go against the grain and become a coordinator. On the other hand, while sidetracking into another career, he still can chase his dream of catching every Pokemon until he reaches Mew. And now, the new Pokemon anime opening strongly hints, it doesn't confirm, but it strongly hints that one of my past predictions is about to come true. And I, honestly, I'm really happy about that. Right after that, we follow up with a future battle with the boys against Eternatus. And in that scene, you can see, well, Lucario and Cinderace. I'm really excited and really happy for that, but at the same time, that reveal didn't really blew me away that much, because let's be honest here, we all knew that it would happen. But excited nonetheless, after that we receive an adorable photo montage of the boys being all best friends with Leon and Raihan, and then we receive this. <laughs> when I saw this one scene right here, I was at a birthday party, and when I saw this, I jumped up the air with hype and happiness. This scene right here with the Alolan gang confirms that not only will we return to Alola to meet old friends, but it also basically about 99.99% confirms that past traveling companions will return. In the past, I made a video about a major staff member of the current Pokemon Journeys anime, making a very interesting statement about the prospect of past anime characters returning. And if we combine that statement, with this scene right here, it's pretty much confirmed 
that the past friends will re-enter the anime. But now, let's talk about the more interesting part of this scene. The Alolan gang is incomplete. There is no Lily. If you would tease and show and confirm that we will see the Alolan gang once again, you would show Lily as well. Because Lily is one of the main pillars of the Sun and Moon anime. There would be no real Sun and Moon anime. There would be no real Sun and Moon gang without her. But why was she left out? Because she currently is searching for her dad together with Lucimine and Gladion. Because she has a long term goal and a long term storyline. Like every other main female protagonist. Misty, May, Dawn, Iris, Serena and Lily. All of them are currently having long term goals, long term storylines with a lot of potential for interpretation and future potential storylines and episodes. So uh, if you guys get my drift here. In my opinion, they designed this teaser like the way they did on purpose. They purposefully left Lily, aka the main female protagonist of Sunny Moon, out of the opening because if my assumption is correct, Lily will return later in the series alongside with all the other main girls because all of them have open questions that need to be answered. And a great way for them to do so could be, well, a potential main female protagonist arc. But hey, that's just a theory. A ranger theory. <laughs> anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this in-depth analysis about the new opening. What is your opinion about my analysis? And just like always, I see you guys in the comments down below. Bye guys!